Hello and welcome to section 5, Installing and Configuring App Volumes. In this section we're going to install the App Volume software using the Example Lab environment. So what are we going to cover in this section? In this section we're going to start with the installation of the App Volume software, the App Volumes Manager and the App Volumes Agent. Before we start the actual installation we will first discuss some of the prerequisites you need in place such as hardware and software requirements. Once installed, we will log into the App Volumes Manager web console and complete the initial configuration tasks. So let's go ahead and get started with the installation. We're going to start by discussing what you need to have in place ready for the installation. If you are following the Example Lab environment, then you already have built the required infrastructure. Once you've done that, we can then install the App Volumes Manager. Before you start installing, you need to make sure you have the following in place. First, an Active Directory account that has read access to the base DN, Active Directory user accounts with the following permissions, standard permissions for setup and connection, and administrator level access to allow installation of applications into writable volumes. You also need a vCenter admin account that has admin permissions at the data center level, .NET 3.5 framework, and a local or remote access to a SQL database. SQL Express is included with the App Volume software download package and supports SQL Express 2008 R2 and 2000 R2 or 2012 Standard and Enterprise Editions. For the Example Lab, we will use the Integrated SQL Database option. For the server running the App Volumes Manager, you will need to meet the following system requirements. Be running the operating system of Windows Server 2008 or 2012, have four virtual CPUs, four gigabytes of RAM, and at least one gig of disk space available. Again, this was pre-built during the installation and setup section of this course. For the App Volumes agent, running on the virtual desktop machines and the provisioning machines, you will need to meet the following system requirements. Operating system support, Windows Server 2008 R2, Service Pack 1 64-bit, standard enterprise data center editions for the IDSH servers, Windows Server 2012 R2 64-bit, standard and enterprise editions, again for RDSH based app stack provisioning, Microsoft Windows 7, Service Pack 1, professional and enterprise editions with the Microsoft Hotfix detailed applied, Microsoft Windows 8.1 professional and enterprise, and finally Microsoft Windows 10 build 1607, current branch and LTSB and business and anniversary editions. You also need to have at least one gig of memory, and one gig of disk space available for the installation. As with the previous install, this was built during the setup section of this course. As a side note, you also need to disable the GPO control read and write access to removable devices or media option. When it comes to the VMware hosting infrastructure, you will need the following. VMware ESX 5.5 or 6.x and vCenter server. Both ESX and vCenter servers must be the same version. VMware Horizon with View 601 or later, or ESX 5.5 Update 3B or 6.0 Update 1 required for vMotion support. It's worth noting that storage vMotion is not yet supported. In addition, you also need to have the following software. Microsoft Active Directory Domain 2003 Functional Level or above, and the following browsers are supported to access the App Volumes Manager, i.e. 9 or later, Firefox 28 or later, Safari 5.1 or later, or Google Chrome 21 or later. So now we're going to actually perform the installation of our App Volumes management software. So we've logged on to the Windows server that's running or will be running as our App Volumes manager. From that server, which has all the prerequisites installed, so .NET Framework is joined to our domain. We're going to navigate to our shared folder. This is where we downloaded the app volume software to into the folder called app volumes. Double click on there. We see we have a disk image, ISO image. It's because we're on 2012, if we double click, that will mount the ISO image. And then basically we double click on installation and then we double click on setup. And that will now launch our app volumes manager setup. So you see the Windows installer is about to launch, preparing for the installation. And then we see our VMware App Volumes installation wizard. So from here, we just click the next button. Then we see the license agreement screen. So scroll down, read the VMware end user license agreement. 
If you agree to that, click the radio button for I accept the terms of the license agreement then click next to continue. Then we have a choice what we're going to install. So specify which app volumes component we're going to launch or that which installer we're going to launch. So as this is our app volumes manager, we're going to click the radio button for install app volumes manager and then click install. So here we have our app volumes manager installation wizard. Click next to continue. And then we basically have the choice of where our database is going to live. As we discussed in the beginning of this course, you can either install a local SQL Express server database or you can connect to an existing SQL server database. So in your production environment, you've probably got an enterprise class SQL cluster, in which case you click this radio button and connect to that instance. As this is just uh, an example lab environment, we're going to click the radio button and we're going to install a local SQL Server Express database on this server. So we're going to click the next button and we see the message pop up saying SQL Server Express is going to be installing and please wait for 5 to 10 minutes or so. So now our SQL database installation has completed, you'll see the database server screen. So here we can choose our local or remote database server to use. We're going to leave this as default because we're going to use our local SQL Express instance. We'll also leave the connect using, so which authentication method we're going to use. We'll use that as the Windows integrated. We also can see here the name of the database that's going to be created called svmanager underscore production. One important box is this box here that says overwrite existing database, brackets if any. So as this is our first app volumes manager server, we won't, we'll won't. we leave that as, as is, or we could tick that box to say overwrite. If this was our second or subsequent app volumes manager, we would make sure that we did not tick the overwrite existing database box. Because otherwise that's going to overwrite the, as it says, the existing database and you're going to lose all your assignments, who's got which app stacks, etc. So only use that if you know that you're going to overwrite the database and that's not going to cause you any problems. So if you're happy with that, click next to continue. Next we see the choose the network port screen, so we're going to choose HTTP port 80 and HTTPS 443. You can change those if you want to, uh, but these will be allowed through the Windows firewall and then click next to continue. Next the destination location is what we're going to install so we're going to install the app volumes manager so we leave that as default and then click next and then we have the ready to install the program so if there's any changes you want to make at this stage click the back button and then go make those changes if you're happy with all the options you've chosen click the install button to start the installation of the actual software itself So now the app volumes wizard has completed the install so we can either have a look at the windows installer log by checking the box there and we're going to click the finish button to finish our installation you'll also see that the icon has now appeared on the desktop ready to launch our app volumes management console just one final thing to quickly check just to make sure that app volumes is, is running is if we go into our services console and then we scroll down we'll see that app volumes manager is now up and running so that leaves the installation now complete and the next task will be to complete the initial installation configuration tasks by logging on which we'll do in the next section.